Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 State of the City Address of the 33rd Mayor of Quincy, Thomas P. Koch. Thank you all very much for being here. For those who have not visited this historic building, this is the Great Hall of Old Town Hall, the City of Quincy. It was built in 1844, designed by the architect Solomon Willard, the father of Quincy's grand industry. It is the longest serving, continuously operated seat of local government in the United States of America. That's our story and we're sticking to it. <laughs> um, thank you again. For the presentation of colors, I would ask everyone to please stand. We welcome the honor guards of the Quincy Police and the Quincy Fire Department. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. This morning, the pledge will be led by Quincy Fire Lieutenant Gerard Shea. Lieutenant Shea is a lifelong Quincy resident and veteran of the United States Marine Corps, where he served in active duty from 2009 to 2013. We're proud to have Lieutenant Shea here with us this morning, representing our first responders, our veterans, and the families of our service members and emergency personnel. Lieutenant Shea. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United right. States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Oh. Thank you, Lieutenant Shea. Our national anthem this morning will be sung under the direction of Quincy Public Schools high school music teacher, Timothy Carew, by students Mary Doherty, a Quincy High senior, Matthew Hollitz, a Quincy High junior, Luntha, a North Quincy High senior, and Giordano McKenzie, a senior at North Quincy High. Kids, come on. Oh. oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home Thank you, kids. That was absolutely terrific. Our invocation this morning will be given by the Most Reverend Mark O'Connell, the Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia for the Archdiocese of Boston. Bishop O'Connell was appointed to the position, the Archdiocese's second highest, earlier this month by Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Prior to his current post, Bishop O'Connell served as Auxiliary Bishop of Boston assigned to the North Region. We are incredibly honored to have Bishop O'Connell with us this morning. Your Excellency. God, creator of us all, watch over this city of Quincy. Create in us hearts seeking justice and peace, hearts of integrity, hearts always who want to do what is right, hearts to stand up to any evil, 
hearts that rejoice in togetherness, in community, in unity. With this, within this Commonwealth of, of Massachusetts, we pray for Governor Healy, plus this day, Mayor Koch, and all who work with him in the City Hall and throughout the city. Protect those who are our first responders, police and fire, and all who work through day and night to keep our people safe. Bless all who work for the city, especially those teachers and administrators in our schools. Bless the young and the old and people of all ages who rely on the government to protect their rights. May this city be marked by justice and integrity. As we rejoice and mourn these, this year, live and die, laugh and cry, work and rest, may the rhythm of our hearts and our city beat with your spirit as you are our creator. So whatever comes our way in this year of 2023, our work will praise you and peace will abide. Amen. Thank you, Bishop O'Connell. Everyone can be seated now, please. <clears throat> we are fortunate to have with us this morning a number of elected officials and other honored guests. Uh, Gov, Gov, if you need to make a phone call now would be the time to do it. This is, this is gonna take a few minutes. Uh, Her Excellency, Madam Governor Mar Healy, thank you for making time in your incredibly busy schedule to be here with us this morning. And our partners of the City Council, um, we have a number of them here with us this morning. Uh, welcome Council President Noel DeBona, at-large Councilor Nina Liang, at-large Councilor Ann Mahoney, Ward 3 Councilor Ian Kane, Ward 5 Councilor Charles Phelan. We also have Ward 6 Councilor Bill Harris. Uh, just this past Friday, Councilor Harris retired from a 35-year career in the United States Postal Service. He ended his career. <laughs> Get this. He ended his career as the Senior Manager of Customer Service Operations for the Boston Post Office, responsible for the oversight of 16 post offices around Greater Boston. So congratulations, Council. <laughs> By charter, the mayor sits as chairman of the school committee, and, the, and there are a number of his colleagues here with him today. Uh, Vice Chairman Frank Santoro, former principal of Quincy High School, and a member of the Quincy College Board of Governors. Uh, member Paul Brigoli, Member Catherine Hubley and Member Emily Lebo. Thank you very much for being here. I would also like to acknowledge. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge Superintendent Kevin Mulley and his entire leadership team for being here this morning. In addition to Speaker Mariano, we are grateful for the work of our entire state delegation, what they do on a daily basis on behalf of the city. We have a number of those members here with us today. State Senator John Keenan with us. Good morning, John. Uh, state Rep Bruce Ayers is with us as well, and Representative Tacky Chan is here with us. <laughs> we welcome the longtime presiding justice of Quincy District Court, the Honorable Mark Coven. Judge Coven is truly the dean of the Massachusetts judiciary, incredibly well respected among his peers, and we're very lucky to have him still presiding in Quincy. Um, we do have a, a small favor to ask, Your Honor. Would you mind using your influence, making a phone call to the trial court and perhaps uh, ask that Judge Palmucci be assigned to Berkshire County? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, also, we'll, we'll also take anywhere but Quincy. Uh, let's see. South Boston Municipal Court Clerk, former Ward 5 Counselor, Kristen Hughes is with us. Morning. We have a number of county officers with us here as well this morning. Former longtime city clerk, former College Board of Governor, current Norfolk County Commissioner Joseph P. Shea is with us. Uh, Commissioner Shea is the Timex watch of the city of Quincy. He takes a licking and he keeps on ticking. He's had a bit of a tough year, but nothing as usual that he can't handle. And the mayor is thrilled that Joe's with us here today. <clears throat> former state rep, former sheriff, former college president for about a half hour, county treasurer, <laughs> Michael G. Bellotti. <clears throat> I 
We have Register of Deeds Bill O'Donnell with us, District Attorney Mike Morrissey, uh, County Treasurer James Til Timothy as well. <laughs> we have a number of formidable elected officials uh, with us this morning that have served the city very well over the years. Uh, one who's not here is recuperating from a recent illness, uh, has not missed one in quite some time, former Congressman, former District Attorney, former Counselor, uh, former Congressman Bill Delahunt. We uh, send our best wishes to Bill, uh, the Congressman, on his recovery. Um, former State Treasurer, former County Treasurer, former City Council, Counselor, and current President of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, Tim Cahill is here with us this morning. We have former Mayor of Braintree, former Transportation Secretary, former Executive Director of the Lottery, and the former mayor of the town of Braintree, Joe Sullivan, a great friend of the city of Quincy, is with us this morning. Good morning, Senator. <laughs> former MDC Commissioner Bill Geary, Bill and his wife Maureen are important parts of the mayor's team, and they've had some pretty, pretty serious challenges this year, so the mayor's thrilled that they're able to join us this morning. Okay. Former state representative and former inspector general of the Commonwealth, Bob Sarasoli, in the cheap seats. Okay. Former Ward 4 counsel, Tom Fabrizio. Former. Please, please clap. Uh, former Ward 5 counsel, Steve Durkin. Former Ward 6. All right. Former Ward 6 Counselor, Assistant City Clerk, Joe Newton. <laughs> former At-Large Counselor, former School Committee Member, Michael McFarland. <laughs> former Ward 1 Counselor, Margaret LaForest. <laughs> former Ward 2 Counselor, Brad Kroll. <laughs> former Ward 4 Counselor, Brian Conley. I think I got all the formers. Uh, with us from our esteemed in institution of higher education, College President Rick DeCristofaro. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor, uh, members of the mayor's family, uh, his wife Christine is here with us this morning. <laughs> and his sister Linda is with us as well. This is, this is really the Joe Shea pot. Joe Shea used to do this for a million years, so. Uh, by charter, there are four department heads who attend city council meetings, two as appointees of the council, and three on behalf of the administration. That's actually five, sorry. Um, city Clerk Nicole Crispo, City Auditor Susan O'Connor, our council appointments, DBW Commissioner Al Grazioso, Planning Director Jim Fatsies, City Solicitor Jim Timmons are all with us this morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you to Police Chief Paul Keenan for being here. Today will be the Chief's last State of the City address in uniform. He will be retiring after almost 16 years as Chief and 40 years as a Quincy Police Officer. Thank you, Chief. Although I'm sure you'll be coming back. I'm, I'm sure you'll be coming back as a civilian. Uh, I think I got everybody, anyone? Okay. I'm going to move into the formal part of the program. Um, it's my great honor to introduce Catherine Craven. Uh, Catherine Craven currently serves as the Chief Administrative and Financial Officer of Babson University, and she's the Chairwoman of the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. Catherine began her career in policymaking as the Budget Director for the House Ways and Means Committee under the leadership of Speaker Tom Finneran. Her long and meaningful partnership with the City of Quincy began in 2004 when our own state treasurer, Tim Cahill, appointed her the executive director of the newly created Massachusetts School Building Authority. In that role, she led an extraordinary renaissance of school construction and renovation projects across the Commonwealth. I do not think it's an exaggeration to say that few, if any, communities have been more successful in utilizing this program than the city of Quincy, thanks to the foundation laid by Catherine and Treasurer Cahill. Today, we have three new schools, a fourth under construction, and a fifth accepted into the program and under design, totaling more than $150 million in straight state grant money for new schools in this city. It's quite a remarkable thing, and the groundwork was laid by the MSBA, by Catherine, and by Treasurer Cahill. So thank you. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> uh, 
Catherine is also a member of the Quincy College Board of Governors and was most recently asked by Mayor Koch to serve as one of the founding mem members of the Adams Presidential Center Foundation. There is simply no one in the world of policy and government in our state that is more well respected, more sought after for her advice and counsel than Catherine Craven. We're lucky to count her as a friend to the city. Catherine. Thank you, Chris, for your generous remarks. I'm honored today to introduce the great city of Quincy's longest serving mayor, my friend, Tom Koch. Mayor Koch leads the city of Quincy with a robust vision for the future while actively nurturing an appreciation for preserving Quincy's foundational role in American history. Mayor Koch is the rare leader who truly invests in the future with an eye for keeping the best elements of Quincy's past. The mayor has a vision for Quincy, sometimes one that others cannot see right away. I will admit that I have personally experienced this phenomenon. Fifteen or so years ago, when I led the school building authority, the mayor invited me to Quincy to visit a parking lot of an aging motel on Hancock Street across the street from Veterans Memorial Stadium. As we walked through the parking lot, the mayor kept saying to me, can't you see it? And I said, no. <laughs> Fast forward a few years, and that parking lot is now the home of the beautiful Central Middle School a building which replaced a 100-year-old school where the thermal system was so irreparably broken that heat came on in the summertime and teachers and students wore coats in the wintertime. Mayor Koch is a man of action for the people of Quincy, their education, well-being, and growth, and sometimes in unexpected ways. When Quincy College was in crisis, it was Mayor Koch who stepped in and stabilized the college as, as its interim president, ensuring that the college would maintain its financial stability and its accreditation. When the pandemic hit, and despite the trends nationwide, Mayor Koch continued important economic development projects that were being postponed all throughout the state and the country. This allowed for major savings in those construction bid packages where cities currently bidding are paying up to a 50% premium on those same projects. Mayor Koch's creativity in collaboration with the Quincy Public School leadership and your teachers has been recognized by the Massachusetts State Board of Education as a statewide model for how to educate school children through an unprecedented disruption in modern times, prioritizing Quincy's kids and their learning time. Because of Mayor Koch and his team's financial acumen, the retirement funding for Quincy's first responders and municipal employees has been secured in a landmark bond deal last year, getting the best rate for Quincy's taxpayers in the past 50 years. And finally, Mayor Koch's passion for honoring Quincy's story, history, and people ensures that future citizens will be inspired by its place in history as the home of more U.S. presidents and generals than anywhere else in the country. Mayor Koch works every day to make certain that there is something for everyone in Quincy, quality of life for residents, including attention to recreational and park spaces, and a growing tourism industry. But most importantly, his proudest role is that of husband to the great Christine Keenan Koch, and dad to Cornelius, Abigail, and Tom Jr., all of whose lives in service to others in their country are a great reflection on their parents. His personal attributes of integrity, honesty, and unfailing devotion to his core values and loyalty inspire the best in all of us who know him. It gives me great pleasure to introduce your mayor, Tom Koch. Good morning. And my staff that are close to me know this is the most uncomfortable time as mayor uh, during the course of the year because I have to do a prepared text. And when I was doing my rosary this morning, Tuesday happens to be the sorrowful mystery, so um, I was agony in preparing for this morning, but now I'm transferring that agony to you because you've got to listen to it. <laughs> So I appreciate you all being here this morning. Thank you, Catherine, for those kind words, introduction, and more importantly, for your friendship to the city of Quincy over the years. You're an invaluable partner in so many ways, from your work on the MSBA years ago to your work on the Quincy College Board of Governors, and going forward as a founding member of the Adams Presidential Center. I'm grateful for your counsel, your expertise, and your friendship. Thank you, Catherine.
Your Excellency, Madam Governor, Governor Healy, welcome and thank you for taking the time to be with us here this morning. I'm grateful for the partnership you built with our community during your years as Attorney General, and I'm very much looking forward to building upon it with you as our Governor. Your natural leadership skills, your willingness to listen, and your fundamental understanding of the challenges we face in the Commonwealth will serve you well. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone in this room that we do not and probably will not agree on every issue. A few of them perhaps quite strongly, but here's a little secret that perhaps the larger world we live in could learn from. We don't have to. We wholeheartedly agree that our job is to improve the lives of the people of the city and the lives of the Commonwealth. Thanks for being here. That's how the government is supposed to work. I wish the very best of luck to you, and I know the people in this room share that same sentiment. Thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you. <clears throat> Lieutenant Che, thank you for leading us in the pledge this morning. Thank you for your service to our nation and your ongoing service to our city. Lieutenant Che is one of hundreds of men and women who grew up in the city, went off to serve their country in the military, and re returned home to serve locally, in this case, as a responder in our police and fire departments. To all our veterans, we thank you. Your Excellency, Bishop O'Connell, thank you for taking the time to be here this morning and offer the invocation. You and I were both blessed with the presence of the late Father Cornelius Harry in our lives. He was a pastor at Sacred Heart Parish for 20 years and loved by everyone. You and I count him as one of our key mentors in life, and I'm quite sure he is pleased from his place above that we are both in service to God's people. Thank you to Imam Aid for being with us this morning and agreeing to lead us in our closing prayer. The mosque in Quincy Point is one of the oldest in New England and part of the fabric of our diverse community. To all of the leaders of our houses of worship, we thank you for providing the spiritual nourishment to our residents. We're all part of the same humanity. Each of us created equal in dignity and worth in the image of our creator. Let us continue to walk together in charity and in peace. Thank you to our kids who did the opening national anthem. It always gives me great pleasure when you're around the kids and it gives me great hope in our future to see their talents. To our department heads, appointees, Thank you for being here. I suppose you have to be here. <laughs> but thanks for all you do on behalf of the citizens of the city. We're fortunate to have such an extraordinary team that gives so much of themselves each and every day, all hours of the day. Your work is profoundly appreciated. To my wife, Christine, who just had a big birthday a few weeks ago. <laughs> I married an older woman, just for the record, <laughs> by two weeks. I thank you for your continued love and support. As all elected officials know, we spend a lot of time away from home, and that puts a little bit more pressure on our loved ones. So thank you, Christine. I know her and I are both very proud of Cuneus, Tom Jr., and Abigail, and the uh, young adults they have become. To my siblings and nieces, nephews, in-laws, outlaws, I thank you all uh, for being there always for me. Uh, today, I'd like to offer my remarks in memory of Tom Bose, the husband of my sister, Linda. Father of Tom Bowes Jr. and police officer Kristen Bowes. Tom was a bus operator for the MBTA for many, many years and loved by his family and he loved his city. May his soul rest in peace. Reverend Clergy, Madam Governor, Judge Coven, Clerk Donovan, Hughes, City Council President DeBonner, members of the City Council, members of the School Committee, State Senator Keeney, Representative Ears and Chan, County officials, business leaders, representative in labor, department heads and citizens of Quincy, friends all. I stand before you in gratitude to be your mayor with great optimism, optimism about the state of our city. Traditionally, this is the part when I tell you the state of the city is strong and getting stronger. Those things are certainly true. But this morning, I'm going to stray from the usual path of speaking about what we've done and what we're going to do. There's plenty of time to do that in the weeks ahead. Instead today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why I have such great faith in our future. Why I believe we're setting the example for the Commonwealth. Why we'll be able to meet our challenges in the years ahead. In the end, the beating heart of the city is in all of you with us here today, and those beyond these walls. 
It's in the people who serve and protect their neighbors, the people who give their time and talent to make Quincy a better place, the people counted on most by the vulnerable members of our community, the people whose life work centers around providing every possible opportunity to serve our young people. Our heart is in people like Jean Bouton, a special education language teacher at Snug Harbor Elementary School for 30 years. We all know the extraordinary challenges our education system has faced the last three years, and I'm incredibly proud with how the Quincy Public Schools handled those challenges. Those pressures of remote learning, hybrid learning, and everything else thrown our way were most acutely felt by those of our young people, particularly those who needed the extra help and attention in the classroom. It was teachers like Jean who truly stepped up, found ways through the chaos to provide the individual attention their students needed, and continue to help us emerge from the pandemic more stable and more successful than before. It is because of the work of so many that the Quincy Public School remains and will remain among the best, the most diverse school districts in the entire Commonwealth. Yes, we continue to make historic investments in the bricks and mortar of our buildings, our fourth new school in the DeCristofaro Learning Center, now under construction, and our fifth, the new Squantum Elementary School, has been accepted by the Mass School Building Authority for its reimbursement program. While we can and must continue to provide safe, functional, and modern learning spaces for our young people, the success really is determined by the results in the classroom. I'm proud to say that we have the second lowest dropout rate of any urban district in Massachusetts, a four-year graduation rate of 91%, with more than 90% of our graduates going either to college, to apprenticeships, or to the military. I'm grateful for the work of all of our 2,000 teachers and staff in our Quincy Public Schools for making this possible. Our heart is in people like Mark Valpando, a 35-year employee of the Department of Public Works, a Quincy kid who built a career around protecting the infrastructure of the neighborhoods where he grew up and where he continues to live. We often do not think of frontline DPW workers like Mark and his colleagues as first responders, but they very much are. Whether it's a water main break in the middle of the night, basements flooding due to a coastal storm, a sore back inside a home, or a massive snowstorm, the men and women of public works are often the first on the scene in an absolutely vital part of maintaining and restoring our public infrastructure. In the height of the pandemic, our workers were entering people's homes to fix burst pipes and clearing backups. Yes, it's a job, but on countless occasions, our men and women in the trenches have gone above and beyond with the call of the job. It's because they care about the city and they truly care about their neighbors. Mark was recently promoted to an engineering position in the department where he is helping to design and oversee what is the largest roadway infrastructure replacement program in our city's history. In just the last five years, under the leadership of Commissioner Grazioso, we've rebuilt 44 miles of roadway, 70 miles of sidewalks, replaced 26 miles of aging water mains, and have lined 27 miles of sewer lines. This year, the DPW will oversee an additional 10 miles of road reconstruction, six miles of water main replacement, and 11 miles of new water mains. This is an exceptionally aggressive program made possible in more than a $100 million investment with the support and collaboration of this body, the members of the City Council. But it wouldn't be remotely feasible without the depth of knowledge and dedication of our DPW team. Thank you to our DPW team. <laughs> Our heart is in people like Lisa Curtin, the business manager in our Department of Municipal Finance, in all of our administrative staff who keeps the city's day-to-day -day operations running efficiently to protect the interest of our taxpayers. As you know, the city could not shut down in the height of the pandemic. It was through Lisa and so many of our team that we were able to ensure our bills got paid, contracts got out the door, provided constituent services at a level our residents expect, and navigated the labyrinth of regulations of emerging emergency state aid and the federal funding. Through it all, we're able to keep the city moving, keep our employees whole, and maintain the level of financial stability that's been at the core of how we function over these past many years. 
we maintain one of the highest bond ratings issued by Wall Street. We have the fourth highest untaxed reserve of any community in the Commonwealth. We have met our unfunded pension obligation, protecting both our retirees and our taxpayers. And we've been able to do it by keeping property taxes well under the state average. What we do as a city is built on a foundation of efficiency and stability. And it was kept that way amid unprecedented circumstances, thanks to our entire administrative team spanning virtually every department in the city. Thank you for everyone who works in our administrative team. Our heart is in people like firefighter Steve Sweet, a 35-year veteran of the department and a mentor for a new generation of firefighters who have populated our engine and ladder companies over the last several years. Firefighter Sweet's knowledge, temperament, and passion for the job are indispensable for department as becoming notably younger. Few in the job better understand the sacrifices and the day-to-day -day emotional toll firefighters can face on the job. We have a terrific young department and one that is fully staffed at a level unseen since the 1970s. Keeping every piece of equipment in service and providing the capacity to add apparatus we needed in the coming months and years. It is indeed something special to see a full complement of firefighters arrive at a scene using the training and expertise handed down to them by firefighters like Stephen Sweet. And they prevent a two alarm fire from becoming a three or four alarm. There have been multiple occasions just the last year in which tragedies have been averted because of the work of our firefighters. I will always be grateful for what they do for our community. Our heart is in people like Captain Rick McCusker of the Police Department, be retiring this year after 37 years of service to our community. Captain McCusker embodies the very best of what it means to be a police officer in this city. Fairness, patience, integrity. As head of the department's Special Operations Unit, Captain McCusker is the Police Department's point person for every major event inter intricately involved in the planning and execution to make sure our public events, celebrations, and demonstrations are safe and welcoming. Much like our fire department, the police department is getting much younger, and they are learning every day by the example set by Captain McCusker and other members of Chief Keenan's command staff. This new generation is a group of men and women who grew up in the city, they know its people and its neighborhoods, and who are absolutely committed to keeping Quincy the safe place that it is. Both our police officers and firefighters deal with our community members in their worst of hours, walking into situations that sometimes seem hard to imagine. The care, respect, and dignity displayed by our first responders, and I hear about this on a regular basis from the public, makes me incredibly proud. Thank you to our first responders. Our heart is in people like Christine Cugini, our Veterans Service Director, whose department works with more than 1,000 of our veterans to ensure they have access to benefits, health care, housing, and other services entitled to them by, by their service to our nation. Christine came to the city family first as a volunteer, coordinating the very first wreaths across America here several years ago, which led to the placement of 8,000 wreaths at Christmas time on our veterans' graves throughout our cemeteries in Quincy. The United States Navy veteran, the passion she showed as a volunteer continues today as head of a department whose sole mission is to serve those who have served and protected us. Her team, with its deep dedication to service, continues to build on and expand the department's core functions. Thank you to our veteran service team for all they do on behalf of our veterans. Our heart is in people like Rich Mead, the chairman of the planning board, and the dozens of resident volunteers who serve on our many boards and commissions. Rich has been on the planning board for nearly a decade, and like all of his fellow board members spanning so many different aspects of civic life, he serves with no compensation. They do it because they want to. They do it because they care. They do it because the future of the city is important to them and give them back is what it means to be part of this community. Rich accepted his volunteer appointment role after more than 35 years as an employee in the planning department, 
17 of those years as director. Over the course of the last four decades, there hasn't been a major economic development initiative in which Rich has not played a role. We are far better city for his work and the work of every volunteer member of our boards and commissions. Thank you, Chairman Mead, and everyone he gives their time to serve on the boards and commissions in this great city. We, look, we need no look further, really, than beyond these windows to see the ongoing redevelopment of downtown Quincy, to see the incredible product of our planning department and volunteer boards that have shaped this development. A vision first conceived decades ago, and one that took on many iterations over the years, is bearing fruit. To date, the redevelopment of our downtown and the public and private investment necessary to make it happen has generated a total of $270 million in economic activity, 1,500 jobs, hundreds of new housing units, new restaurants and businesses, and a tangible sense that the downtown is once again the economic hub in Quincy. We've still got plenty more work to do, and in the, this year, certainly in the years to come, but I'm confident we'll be able to keep it moving forward with the great team we have that has poured so much of their talent into it over the years. Thank you to that team. Our heart is in the people like Commissioner Jay Duca. He's just retired as a Director of Inspection Services for more than 30, 20 years, I guess. More years in that business, but 20 with us in Quincy. Jay was an absolutely indispensable part of our team, someone who was universally trusted and respected by his employees, the public, and the contractors he regulated. Jay ran a department whose mission ranges from regulating construction of big projects across the city but also issuing permits to homeowners doing work on their houses. It's one of those areas of the city where dealing with the department may be a resident's first and only interaction with its government. It is so important that this interaction leave a positive impression, that the resident feels they've been dealt with fairly, respectfully, and honestly. And that's how Jay and everyone worked in his department have operated for many, many years. He will be sorely missed, but the values he instilled in the department will certainly carry on. Thank you, Jay. Our heart is in people like Steve Zambruno, a second generation foreman in our Department of Natural Resources, responsible for the care of the parks and playing fields and open spaces used by thousands of our young people and thousands of young people coming to visit from this, across the state. We've long had in the city one of the most expansive and well-kept park systems in Massachusetts, and we keep adding to it each and every year. We keep these parks and playing fields in shape, not with massive budget or staffing increases, but because we have laborers and foremen like Stevie who take pride in their work. We have a connection to the places they work on a daily basis and understand their neighbors are counting on them. In the same way, our publicly owned cemeteries have provided the meticulous care they deserve and our residents in need of burial services are treated with utmost respect and dignity by Superintendent Scott Logan and his team. The department's mission goes far beyond maintenance. Over just the last two years, we've planted more than 1,000 new trees. We've rebuilt 30 playgrounds, added to our open space inventory by preventing a large-scale development at the Town River Marina, a major property on Adams Street next to the Eventide property, the former beachcomber site on Wollaston Beach, and several acres of land on Harriet Avenue in Montclair by the Montclair Marsh. This year, we'll be completing a federally funded restoration of historic Mount Wollaston Cemetery. And the expansion of Pine Hill Cemetery now underway makes Quincy one of the few cities that can offer pre-sale cemetery plots to its residents. Having this opportunity is rare and the direct result of a tremendous amount of work from our team, our contractors, our permitting engineers, the cemetery board of managers, and the body of the city council. These things only happen through collaboration. Our heart is in people like Jesse Thuma, a longtime librarian at the Thomas Grain Public Library, who retired this summer after more than 20 years. Our library system, the historic Richardson Building, and our three branches are treasures. They've helped make uh, they made so actually by the enthusiasm, not only by Jesse, but all of the employees there, 
instilling the, instilling the love of reading. Yes, people still read, thank God. And we have plenty of books available at the library. Last year alone, the library welcomes 300,000 individual visits. More than a half a million items were put in circulation and more than 15,000 people attended programs there. This is simply not possible without a team of employees who engage with patients, ensure they feel welcome, and help them inspire the kind of creativity and love of learning that quite literally adorns the walls of our libraries. Thank you to everyone who makes Thomas Crane such a jewel for this community. Our heart is in people like Peggy and Jack Kelly, longtime Squanum residents, who volunteer hours upon hours at the Kennedy Senior Center with their fellow seniors. In total, volunteers like Jack and Peggy contributed more than 5,000 hours at the center in a wide range of capacities. The need for our seniors to be engaged, form connections, and find resources was only amplified by the pandemic. In the work of the Kennedy Center, its staff and volunteers has only become more vital to the overall health of the city. Since the Kennedy Center reopened full-time in July of 2021, nearly 1,000 residents have joined as new members. Almost 10,000 of our seniors attended a program, and our transportation services provided more than 20,000 rides to medical appointments. The Kennedy Center is an incredibly important resource for our seniors, made so valuable by the volunteers and the staff there. Thank you. Of course, the heart of the city is also outside your government. It's in people like David Chu and hundreds of small business owners who persevered the shock and chaos of the pandemic, developed creative ways to survive, and are today emerging stronger than ever before. Dave opened the Dairy Queen in Quincy Point in the 1960s, one of my favorite spots, by the way, <laughs> one of our community's first Asian American business owners. He will tell you it was certainly different then but people like Dave have forged a path for the city's most recent great immigration wave. And today, more than half of the business licenses issued in our city go to Asian American entrepreneurs. Our strength is in our diversity, and anyone who thinks otherwise is mistaken. Our business community suffered mightily during the pandemic, and I'm incredibly proud of the collaboration between the city, the Chamber of Commerce, and President Tim Cahill to strike a balance between providing safety amid the worst public health crisis in a century and protecting our small business owners. More than 1.5 million in emergency housing assistance for service employees during the peak of the pandemic, more than 2 million in direct grant funding to small business owners to pay the rent and mortgage while they were shut down, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees waived to facilitate business reopening, developing innovative safety plans to keep construction moving rather than shutting projects down. I truly believe our public health measures save lives and our collaboration with the Chamber, with the City Council, and our state leaders help save livelihoods in this community. <laughs> The heart of our city is in people like Quincy Community Action Program CEO Beth Ann Strollo and our entire nonprofit community. Beth Ann has been with QCAP for nearly 40 years, more than 20 of them as its CEO. You must have sat at 15, Beth Ann, because you don't look. <laughs> in that time, I'm fairly certain the agency hasn't seen a period, though, like the last three years. By ensuring that families had access to food, fuel assistance, childcare, and other services, QCAP, together with our other nonprofits, helped to substantially ease the burden caused by the pandemic on our vulnerable populations. Last year alone, QCAP provided services to some 17,000 residents. The longstanding partnership the city maintained with Beth Ann and QCAP, as well as places like Interface Social Services, the Gavin Foundation, Bay State Community Services, Father Bills, Salvation Army, Quincy Asian Resources, Mena Community Health, they stands as an unequivocal message that the community takes care of its own in times of crisis, 
I'm incredibly grateful for all the work of our nonprofits, the work they did with such dedication and passion during the pandemic, and it continues today. Thank you to our nonprofits. Friends, the people I mentioned today are symbols of what is right about our city. Answering the question of why I'm so confident in our future. I also want to talk briefly about my colleagues in elected office. In this city and in this Commonwealth, we work together. We build partnerships. We don't let our differences get in the way of providing the service our residents deserve and expect. Council President DeBona, Councilors Liang, Mahoney, McCarthy, and Dronico Kane, Phelan, and Harris. I'm eternally grateful for your work, your counsel, and your collaboration. I can say without hesitation that the neighborhoods across our city are extraordinarily well represented thanks to your work. Our administration is better off for your ideas and input. And the path you helped set has our city undeniably heading in the right direction. My colleagues on the school committee, you work together with the superintendent and his leadership team in navigating the most challenging three years public education has faced in generations is nothing short of remarkable. You handled every new hurdle, every development, every crisis with great effort and resolve, and the Quincy Public Schools continue to thrive because of it. Thank you to my colleagues. Our entire state delegation for their work on Beacon Hill, Speaker Mariano, Senator Keenan, Representative Viers, Representative Chan, your work in advocating every day for Quincy by securing appropriate levels of local aid, education funding, and money to supplement our own infrastructure investments makes a huge difference. And to Congressman Lynch for his tireless advocacy on behalf of this community and help us to secure millions of dollars in federal funding for projects and initiatives across the city. Thank you to my colleagues. There is no limit to what we can accomplish when we work together. Let us continue to be the example for that. Lastly, I am grateful for the blessing to serve as mayor of this historic city, the city we all love. Thank you for that honor and privilege. As we leave here today, let us be mindful of the struggles around the world. The war in Ukraine, the conflicts in the Middle East, the struggle for human rights in China, and the violence in Africa. Even with all the division and conflict here in our own land, let us not forget that America is great because America is good. Yes, there is more to do to achieve that more perfect union, but far more is accomplished in unity than with division. God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I can say that it's been the honor of my life, and I think I speak for the rest of the team in the room, to be, part, be a small part of the team you put together here. Uh, our closing prayer this morning will be offered by Imam Talel Aid, the Executive Director of the Islamic Institute of Boston. Dr. Aid has been a staple of the religious community in Quincy for more than 40 years, serving as Imam and Religious Director of the Islamic Center of New England in Quincy Point from 1982 to 2005. He's one of the region's most well-respected well theologians, appointed by President George W. Bush to the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom and reappointed to a second term on that, on that commission by President Obama. He and his family are longtime Quincy residents, and the mayor is truly honored to have him with us here today. Ima.
in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Peace be with you. May God bless us all as we gather uh, today to look at the affairs of our city. We pray to you, our creator, to shower upon us the light of guidance and to remove from us the darkness of ignorance and wrongdoing. Our creator, almighty God, as the sun of a new year is slowly rising and its flower is still moist with dew, and as members of our blessed city of Quincy are here to witness and serve with good heart, we pray that you accept our gathering today. We pray to you, our creator, to bless the mayor of our city and to grant him health and success to continue working to keep the city flourishing. We pray to you, our creator, to guide all those who are working for this city. And we pray that you may help them make this city a beacon for the state or the commonwealth of the state of Massachusetts. May the peace and the blessings of God be upon all those who are present in this assembly. May you bless the Quincy police, the firefighters, the Department of Public Work, the school committee, to keep this city safe and productive. May the peace of God be upon all those who are present in this assembly. May God bless our city and may God bless America. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Imam, for those beautiful words. Uh, before we wrap up, I did miss someone that I would like to recognize as with us today, the former mayor of Lawrence, uh, former Transportation Secretary Kevin Sullivan. Thank you for being with us today. I had it written down. I had it written down and then I missed it. So it was there. Um, and before we bring up our terrific singer, uh, I just want to thank uh, members of the mayor's team uh, that put this morning together, Director of Operations, Helen Murphy, who operates this whole thing, Erin uh, Glennon for her work on the program, and the rest of the mayor's team that uh, made this get together uh, pretty smooth, I think. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, we took a poll at City Hall about who would we like to have saying, God bless America. And it was, it was down to either Sheriff Pat McDermott or Clerk of Courts, Kirsten Hughes. <laughs> it was not close. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Please welcome Boston Municipal Court, Clerk of Courts, former Ward 5 City Councilor, Kirsten Hughes, to lead us in God Bless America. Oh no, the sheriff's my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well what a great uh, morning. Thank you, Mayor, and um, if everyone would please join me uh, in singing this. It's nice to be back up here. Maybe I don't want to give it up so fast. Yeah. God bless America. 
land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Home. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. We're done.